G'day everyone, welcome to my art channel, Brushes with Beck. Today's video is part three of my wet otter fur drawing and it is going very, very slowly. I will admit this piece has been very, very challenging for me and I've actually had a lot of trouble focusing on it for long periods of time. So I haven't gotten anywhere near as far as I would like, but there's almost another three hours worth of work in this short video. So I do hope you enjoy it. Let's get into it. So if you haven't seen the other parts to this uh, drawing, I am working on light gray pastel matte board with mostly polychromos color pencils and I think just the one Dermot drawing color, which is the Mars Violet. Now I'm using cotton buds uh, to blend out on this one, but I'm using them dry only. So I don't have any solvents or anything or mineral spirits or anything like that on the cotton bud. Now the challenging thing about this one is because it's wet fur, it has a particular look to it and you can't just do in lots of nice little fine fur strands like you do with regular fur because it has to look clumped together. It has to reflect the light in particular ways. It has to look, you know, just so. And I'm finding it really hard to focus and mapping out all of these sort of zigzaggy pattern bits where the fur is parting and all of that has sort of been doing my head in a little bit. So I have been struggling with that. But my main process for this is working in my underlayer of a base tone for that area of color and then slowly building the strength of that up and working in the fur texture over that in darker and lighter versions of that color. So it's been very slow going and but it is, it is getting there. Now, if you are wondering why I have got bright blue and bright green fur here, <laughs> that is because in my reference photo, the way the light reflects off of the otter's wet fur is that it brings in so much blue reflection from the sky and green reflection from trees in the background. So that's why this otter doesn't have brown fur. He has blue fur and green fur and all sorts of different colors. It's made it extremely interesting and it's been fun to work in different colors than my normal browns and grays, but it's, that's certainly made it fun, but it has been more challenging because it is much more detailed, much more focused on how the fur is clumping together and it is hard to focus and sort of really get into a good rhythm with this one I'm finding. So I'm considering putting it aside again for a while, but I'm really trying hard not to do that. There's a lot of other pieces that I want to do. They're just, you know, sort of getting started on them and really getting in the groove. I don't like working on more than one major piece at once. I can do a couple of smaller things like last week's video if you saw of my Dermot drawing pencils with a laughing kookaburra that was a smaller piece didn't take me I was able to complete that in a relatively short amount of time but I don't like working on more than one major piece at a time otherwise I find I sort of get a bit lost between the two when I find it hard to pick the other one back up again so I'm really trying to push through and finish this one up now in these top areas of the head here with that green fur I'm using the, I think it's cold gray one, and I also used ivory to smooth and blend out the colors there. And before I've moved on to the eye here, I was sort of getting a bit stuck around this section of the face. So I thought if I added the eye in, everything would be much easier to work on. So I'm going in and just mapping out the different areas of color, the highlights in the eye, where it's lighter brown versus darker brown, and sort of laying in those colors nice and strong and sort of blending them out with the other colors as I layer them over the top so everything blends together nicely. Obviously this this eye is too small of an area to use a cotton bud to blend out the pencils so you have to use the pencils themselves to blend out which works very very well on pastel mat. So popping in the pupil nice and dark and then going back in and refining the rest of the eye. And as you can see, as I build up the color more and the layers of pencil, blending everything together, it starts to look really, really nice. And I just have to adjust sort of some of the darker shadowed areas of the eye to make the brighter areas of the eye pop out a little bit more. So doing the eye also includes the eyelids and the fur surrounding the eye as well. So that's also a big job. That's, there's quite a lot of intricate 
uh, color changes and slim areas of highlights and shadow in areas like that as well. So pay close attention to not only your um, animal's eyeball itself, but the eyelids as well and that small rim of fur around the eye because getting the details and those accurate and little highlights on the edge of the eyelids is also really, really important in getting it to look realistic. So once I've got the eye and most of that in, it makes it a bit easier to come back in and start on some more areas of fur and mapping in colors for those uh, clumps of fur just below the eye there. So it's going to look quite different to the cheek on the other side of the otter because the lighting is different and the angle from which you're viewing it is different, but it all comes together quite nicely. So I've found uh, this side of the cheek is a lot brighter. So what I'm doing is I'm actually sort of trying to map in the darker areas in between the uh, bright strands of fur and then work around that. So I'm going in uh, and mapping in those darker areas as you can see, adding in some white between them and then over time building up the strength of those dark areas and laying in a bit more white in the brighter areas to really pump up those shiny wet fur highlights. So it's really just a matter of it's paying close attention to that reference but also a lot of the time I'm not following the reference 100%. I'm not doing every fur strand as it should be. I'm just using it as a guideline for how to draw my wet fur and what colors are there and where it's clumping and what it's doing. And so it's not a copy of a photo. This is an interpretation of that photo. And it's become, like I said, it's been very, very challenging for me because I've never done something quite like this before, even though I have done detailed close-ups of animal faces before, like my cat, this is something completely different. So adding in that top eyelid, you can see really adds a whole lot of depth to that eye as well, and the shading and contour on that eyelid really helps make it pop and stand out. So now that I've got that in, I can actually work on that fur around the top of the eye as well, without worrying about uh, taking it down too far and that just leads on to the next area of fur. So as you can see, I'm moving around quite a lot in this drawing. As I think I said in the previous video, if you've watched that, I've been struggling to really do big blocks at a time here. I get a little bit overwhelmed with all the different, the pattern changes and following the lines and working out where everything is. So I sort of do a little bit of one spot, move back to another area go back to the original spot and it's just a way of working my way through the drawing slowly but surely. So just moving back and forth through that. So I just want to add that if you have been enjoying this video to please give it a thumbs up. Remember to comment down below and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and hit that notification bell button to be notified of all of my new video uploads which is every single week. So moving through this blue fur some more. You can see I've started really pale, added some mid-tones of blues before going in with my darker blue tones to add in a bit of uh, detail on those dark edges before really sort of refining that area. And I move back and forth then between uh, the light and dark tones as well to get it looking a bit how I like. Now on the right hand side of this picture, the uh, side of the otter's face is actually in bright sunlight. So a lot of this area off to the side here is a very different color to the rest of the otter. So it's yellow tones, warmish, warm reddish tones. So I've started in with um, ivory and some sort of like a golden color to sort of illustrate that rather than the purple and gray tones that uh, are prominent throughout the rest of the piece. So that's really going to hopefully highlight that change in lighting and colour and hopefully make that really pop. But it's sort of hard to see how it's going to turn out until I finish the whole thing 100%. So just working through that slowly. Now going back to the bottom of the cheek here and once again uh, this is all quite brightly coloured fur. So I've 
popped in a little hint of some darker darker color thrown in some whites for the really bright hairs and then I've mapped in my darks around those whites and from now on I'm just going back and forth over those dark and bright areas using different colors refining the fur strands and the pattern how I want it to be and with the really dark tones I'm actually sort of softening them up and blending them out with one of my paler warm greys just to um, take away some of that paper texture and just to make that fur look really nice and smooth so just going back and forth there with that and there you can see some of that golden brown tone on the right hand side just where the sunlight is catching the otter's fur instead of uh, being in shade so adding more darks to those dark tones blending them out with the warm grey <laughs> moving away from that area because it felt like it's done and just then working in the next section trying to get in as much as I can get done as possible so that's it once again for this week's video I've tried to make as much progress on this piece as possible but as I said it has been extremely challenging but I do hope you've been enjoying the process I'm really not sure how many more videos this is going to take I really wanted to get a lot more packed into this video but hopefully for the next one I will be able to do that so thank you once again for watching I do hope you've enjoyed it please give it a thumbs up comment down below subscribe and I'll see you again next week for another one Stay creative.